नमस्ते नमस्ते एवरीवन वेलकम टू ऑप्टिक्स क्लास रे ऑप्टिक्स क्लास वी हैव सॉल्व सम प्रॉब्लम्स रिगार्डिंग रिफ्रैक्शन थ्रू ए सिंगल सरफेस ऑलरेडी आई हैव टोल्ड दैट दैट आइडिया ऑफ सॉल्विंग द प्रॉब्लम हेल्प्स यू टू डिराइव लेंस मेकर्स फॉर्मूला ना व्हाट यू मीन बाय लेंस मेकर्स फॉर्मूला व्हाई इट इज कॉल्ड लेंस मेकर्स फॉर्मूला नाउ सपोज यू हैव एनीबडी इज हैविंग आई डिफेक्ट दैट मींस आइदर मियोपिया और हाइपरमेट्रोपिया Uh, suppose they can't see far away object it doesn't get focused at a proper position then that the, that problem arises if if you can't see a near object or a far away object that problem arises because the uh, these uh, uh, ciliary muscles in the eye cannot com compress the eye lens to a certain extent the, in a normal human being the ciliary muscles can uh, expand and compress the eye lens to that extent that you can see all the objects but as the uh, because of some problems the ciliary muscles lose their uh, uh, ability to com uh, compress the lens to a very large extent or expand also so uh, i was uh, I, the eye lens cannot uh, form the image on the retina so we have to help the eye lens uh, by keeping another lens in front of our eye according whether whether it is myopia or hypermetropia we use concave lens or convex lens now when you when the person having myopia or hypermetropia approaches doctor doctor will see what is the problem with this person whether he or she can't see the far away objects or the closer objects whether the image is formed in front of retina or away from the retina if you bring if you want to bring the image back to the retina what type of lens he has to wear whether it is concave or convex accordingly doctor will prefer a um, uh, lens uh, doctor will say you have to wear a lens of 0.25 power 0.1 power point minus 0.5 power minus 0.3 power a uh, diopter 0.3 diopter minus 0.2 diopter like this or doctor will prefer a lens of so much focal length so doctor will write you have to wear so much of power or so much of focal length um, lens now you will take it to the shop you will ask the lens maker to prepare such a lens because doctor has written he will look into that if you want uh, uh a lens of 0.5 power 0.5 diopter power or i'll write uh, focal length so the, suppose the doctor has preferred a uh, lens of focal length plus 2 meters then uh, shopkeeper will ask you what type of lens you want do you want a lens made up of uh, uh, fiber plastic or glass flint glass this glass that glass or will you do you want a uh, um, lens made up of uh, um diamond which material so refractive index of the lens it is left to you focal length is uh, given by the doctor right refractive index is left to you you will say i want uh, this and this type i don't want diamond i want uh, only uh, fiber uh, glass uh, uh, that uh, spectacles okay that is selected refractive index of the material of the lens is selected now if the lens maker has to prepare that material lens and uh, so of refractive index nl how much curvature he has to give for both the sides so that its focal length that means when the parallel rays are incident on the lens where should they get focused that is called focus and this focal lens should be 2 meter i think you are aware of all these things which you have studied in your lower lower classes every lens has a focal length every lens is characterized by a, a focal length what do you mean by focal length when parallel rays are incident on a lens after refraction through both the surfaces they meet at a point and if it is a convex convex lens if it is a concave lens they appear to meet at a point they happen to or they diverge in such a way that they appear to diverge from a fixed point here this is the focus and this is the focal length whatever it is so if parallel rays are incident on a lens after refraction either they converge at a point or after refraction they appear to diverge from a point you use the words like this right just listen to the words if parallel rays are incident on a convex lens after refraction they meet at a point or if parallel rays are incident on a lens after reflex uh, after refraction they diverge and appear to diverge from a point appear to diverge from a point they converge at a point here not appearing to converge at a point they really converge at a point at a point they appear to diverge from a point that is not real appearing to diverging from this point 
okay so that is the focal length and if the lens maker using this material suggested by you and to produce a focal length of 2 meter according to the doctor how much radius should be given to the two surfaces what is the radius of each surface or uh, um, both the surfaces that is what he has to select so he should select this r1 and r2 and if we want to select this r1 and r2 radius of this the center will be here radius of this the center will be here what should be the radiate given to both the surfaces then you have to connect focal length refractive index of the lens as well as the surrounding medium also so i will call this as n2 refractive index of the lens refractive index of the surrounding medium i will take it as n1 so this is n2 this is n1 and radius of curvature of this radius of curvature of this r2 then 1 by f is equal to n2 by n1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this is called lens makers formula now doctor will prefer this one which focal length lens you have to wear in order to correct your image formation a process this is selected by you surrounding medium however it is r and these two will be given by the lens maker lens maker will create a curvature for both the surfaces and he will prepare the lens so that is why it is called lens makers formula this is the thing what you have to get at the end of the derivation and lens is an optical medium bounded by two surfaces and uh, either the two uh, or at least one surface one plane surface this is plano convex this is plano concave biconvex and uh, biconcave double convex uh, double concave or biconcave double convex or biconvex plano concave plano convex you can have any type of lens now what is a thin lens now suppose you have a lens like this <coughs> this is a part of a sphere its center is here this is a part of a sphere its center is here now compared to the radius here of this surface this thickness is very small compared to the radius of this surface this is the radius compared to this radius this thickness is very small so if the thickness of the lens is very small compared to the radius of curvatures then it is called a thin lens thin lens is one whose thickness is very small compared to the radius of curvatures okay that is okay right what about a sphere glass sphere in the previous class we did one problem we solved one problem glass sphere if it is a glass sphere can you call it as a thin lens never because its radius is smaller thickness is larger how do you call it as a thin lens thickness itself is larger much double the radius it is not a thin lens so now let me take a thin lens okay you take a pen and paper that is very important now take a pen and paper start drawing the diagrams don't watch this um, um, video as if you are watching a movie this is not a movie this is a uh, educational video you have to draw and you have to study as you watch please take a paper please take a pen and you must do that and if you are not doing it switch off your commodity whether it is a mobile or whether it is a laptop switch it off and go away because that is a better option you have to do it now i'll take a lens okay it's a thin lens because its radius is much more than its thickness now the center of one surface will be here center of another surface will be here somewhere join them that, that is the principal axis line joining the two centers of curvatures and the radii of the two curvatures may not be the same it may be same then it is called biconvex and uh, equiconvex it is called if both the radii are same that may not be same also okay now the center of this surface is somewhere here and the center of this one is somewhere here i'll name the surfaces a b c d o is a point object kept on the left side of the lens consider two rays of light coming from the point object o one moving along the principal axis passing undeviated because for this surface it is passing through the center for this surface it is passing through the center it is incident normally on both the surfaces because this is a part of a sphere 
So the center is here. This ray is going to pass through the center. Normal incidence passes undeviated. That is okay. Good. What about the other ray? Consider another ray. Now we should be very careful. Let it be incident on the first surface. Okay. Now this diagram I am going to draw it uh, and I will draw so many things here. Then we will refine it afterwards. I will draw it again later. But you can also do the same thing. Now, sir, what happens to this ray? That is very important now. <coughs> okay. A ray of light is incident along like this. Now, suppose N1 is the refractive index of this medium outside and N2 is the refractive index of the medium of the lens. Let us assume that this is rarer, this is denser. Say this is glass, this is air. When a ray of light is traveling from rarer to denser medium, it bends towards the normal. You know it. But where is the normal? This is the original direction, correct? This is the original direction of the ray of light and it should bend towards the normal. If you want the normal, you have to complete this surface. This is the part of a sphere. Of course, you can scribble it like this. This is the part of a sphere. Its center may be somewhere here. Now join this. Forget about this surface. That is later, right? Forget about the second surface. What the first surface will do? Join this point and this. Uh, uh, this is the normal, correct? This is the normal. And the ray must bend towards the normal instead of going like this because rarer to denser movement. So I will draw this here. It bends towards the normal. Am I right? It does bend towards the normal. Now you will get the previous idea that the problem, idea of the problem. <clears throat> what is the idea of the problem? Suppose this surface was absent. What would have happened to this ray? Suppose we, we, were, we were having only this surface. What would have happened to that ray? That ray would have traveled and bent towards the normal and would have traveled straight. Am I right? So, if this surface was absent, ADC, what do you mean by surface ADC is absent? If this is glass, continuous glass. There is no surface here. It is continuously con uh, the, the same medium. That means if this is absent, this ray may not have turned back again. It should have traveled like this. Now, this can be shown here like this by dotted lines. So, I will show it using the same line has to be continued like this. So, this is where only first, uh, uh, first surface will form the image. I call it as I1. Got it now? In the absence of the second surface, first surface alone, this one, will bend the ray of light towards the normal because its center will be somewhere here, C1 I will call and uh, this is the normal. So ray was traveling like this, it has bent towards the normal, it would have moved straight. Now cut this surface, cut this one, remove the remaining glass and throw it away, let it be air. Now we won't get this image because the ray had got an opportunity to, moving, um, to move back to air. So as this ray travels into air like this. Now where should it bend? Now it is moving from denser to rarer. You should be very careful. I will go back again. When the ray was traveling from here to here and inside, rarer to denser, moving like this, bending towards the normal. So bent towards the normal. And it has bent like this. It has met the principal axis at I1. Remember it is not outside air. Uh, sorry, it is not at the outside medium air. It is inside glass itself, this condition. So it, is, it has not been cut like this. Now can you write angle of incidence and angle of refraction here? Definitely. See again all the uh, definitions. Angle between incident ray and normal. Angle of incidence. Angle between refracted ray and normal. Angle of refraction, first one. Now ask the second surface. The ray was moving like this. Suddenly cut the second surface, remove it, and the rest of the things are air now, except this one glass. This is air, this is air, say. The ray gets a chance of coming back to the same medium. Now, how do you proceed this ray? It was moving like this, bent towards the normal. Now you have to proceed this one. It is moving from denser to rarer medium. It should bend away from the normal. Which normal? Normal drawn to this surface, not this one. Correct? Because, oh, sorry, normal drawn to this surface, not this one. Because refraction is occurring here in this surface. So if the refraction is occurring here, find out where is the center of this surface. Where may be the center of this? Say somewhere here. See C2, center of the second surface where the refraction is occurring here. I want to know what happens to this ray of light. 
it, it, if it was traveling straight, it would have traveled like this. Draw a normal at this point of incidence. How do you draw a normal? You have to join the center and this one, correct? If, I, if it is uh, very disturbing, I will rub all these things, right? I will rub this one, okay? The ray was traveling like this. Now I want to have a normal here like this, correct? I will continue the normal. The ray instead of traveling like this, the no normal is here. Because for this surface, center is here. This is the normal line. This ray which was traveling like this should bend towards, the, uh, sorry, away from the normal, denser to rarer. Away from the normal means like this. It should, otherwise if it was bending like this, it would have been uh, towards the normal. It should be away from the normal, like this. This is the final image. Got it now? So once you form this one, for this surface, center may be somewhere here, rub this. It is incident here, join this one. This ray was traveling like this. This is the normal. If it had traveled here, if this ray was traveling like this, it is towards the normal. This is away from the normal. From its original direction, away from the normal. So shall I draw it again? I'll draw it again. Of course, derivation is only mathematical. You know the theory behind this because we have solved the problem. We have enough knowledge within us, so derivation becomes easy. So take a lens, A, B, C, you can also draw it again and uh, this is D, O is a point object, one ray of light incident along the principal axis passes undeviated, no problem, it is incident normally, normal incidence, no deviation, another ray of light incident like this, first bending towards this one, second bending towards this one, so finally it meets the principal axis at I. That is the final image. Suppose the second uh, uh, surface was absent, this would have moved straight. So you have to produce the same direction like this, right? Don't bend it. You have to, it would have moved straight to meet the principal axis at somewhere here. This is I1, image formed by the first surface, okay? And uh, right. And shall I name all the distances? So uh, this is object distance from the lens, this is final image distance from the lens and this is the image formed by the first surface and N1 is the refractive index of the medium outside, N2 is the refractive index of the medium inside. Now I have to get the answer for this. Okay, we will do it one by one and you know the final formula should be 1 by F is equal to N2 by N1 minus 1 into 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. This should be the final formula. At the same time, you must remember that you have to use this formula twice. N1 by minus U plus N2 by V is equal to N2 minus N1 by R. This is what you have to do. Okay? Right. Shall we apply it to the first surface? Now, ask the first surface. Our same interview. Interview with first surface. Surface ABC, surface ABC. Do you have any object in front of you? Yes, sir. I have an object. I receive many, many rays of light. And out of them, two rays of light are here. And if I produce them backwards, I get object here. So you have an object. What did you do with this object? Sir, I bent the two rays like this and I formed the image at I1. So shall I show it here? So I will rub this formula because you know this. I have the first surface and the second surface is not yet produced and it has not yet been carved in and uh, so it is like this and here is the object and the ray of light coming like this of course this passes undeviated and if you complete this uh, this here will be the center C1 and shall I call this as radius R1? I can call the radius R1. Now it, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, normal. The ray which was traveling like this bends towards the normal and meets the principal axis at this point, right? This is the I1 and this is V1, am I right? This is V1. This is N2, this is N1. So shall I write, this is B, this is A, this is C. Second surface, we are not at all bothered. This is I1, this is R1. How sir? Incident ray and normal. Refracted ray and normal. Are they? They are correct, right? Now, let us write the formula. 
refractive index of the medium n1 by minus u plus n2 by v n2 minus n1 by r refractive index of the medium where incident rays are present n1 no problem by object distance ob of course minus object distance it is in the left hand side so i will use the i will use the uh, this uh, sign conventions again and again and you know that once you derive the equation using sign conventions then the formula is ready and it is ready for any type of surface whether it is convex lens or concave lens for any lens you should be ready so let us use the uh, sign conventions again and again here so ob minus ob why sir because it is on the left hand side uh, what else then one bar plus n2 by v refractive index of the medium where refracted rays are present that is n2 itself by image distance that is on the right hand side so this is the coordinate system for us it is on the right hand side and it is v1 and uh, I, shall i write it as bi1 it is positive bi1 is equal to refracting medium refractive index incident medium refractive index by radius of curvature bc1 so it is plus bc1 why because it is on the right hand side it is plus bc1 right one equation so shall i write it in a proper way uh, n1 by o minus or minus ob n1 by ob plus n2 by bi1 is equal to n2 minus n1 by bc1 okay that is uh, one part now again we have to go to the second part what is the second part ask the second surface surface 2 surface adc surface adc this one are you receiving any rays of light yes sir how many rays of light you receive many many rays name any two one is this one sir another is this one i receive two rays of light one is moving like this another is moving like this now what did you do with these two rays sir i produced them and i bent them after going to air and when they went to air i bent them and i made them to form the image at this point and at a distance of v okay do you have any object and do you feel that these rays are coming from any object surface adc says they must be coming from an object sir wait a minute i will see i'll produce them backwards i'll produce them backwards they never meet sir so i'll do one thing i will produce them forward i'll produce them forward so i1 acts like an object for the first surface first surface oh sorry for second surface this image formed by the first surface acts like an object for the second surface because second surface very poor guy it, if it was a, a putting the rays back they never met no object at least we will take this as an object if you produce it forward you get an object here so i will list the values now for the second surface if you ask where are the incident rays n2 incident rays are here n2 and where are the refracted rays n1 where is n1 okay here back to this n1 coming back to r n1 and uh, what is the object distance for this surface this is the object distance where is the image distance this one so shall i write this one okay so same formula n1 by minus u plus n2 by v is equal to n2 minus n1 by r for the second surface okay uh, if you want i will draw one more diagram for the second surface we will uh, do that properly okay only second surface which is which one this one a d c this is glass now i am not bothered about the first surface i am bothered about only the second surface adc and this is the um, principal axis and you know that uh, center is somewhere here for this surface right center will be somewhere here and one ray this is like this and i will call that ray n1 n2 i will call it as n1 n2 so n1 is here n2 is here it was moving like this and another ray was moving along the principal axis like this it moves straight and these two rays are and how it is bent like this because if you draw a normal here if you draw a normal this will be the normal and it is like this this ray instead of moving like this it has bent away from the normal that means like this it has bent away from the normal so these are the two rays and this is i1 of course it comes away a little bit away if you want the same type of diagram 
it should be like this I'd search for different ch chalks yes like this and it is like this somewhere here right so this is I1 which is uh, uh, V1 from here from uh, this surface it is V1 okay like this and uh, this is final V hope you have you can understand this diagram right so one ray here inside the medium like this bent formed at i in final image but if it is produced backwards they meet otherwise they don't meet at all so for the second surface we will write so this is n2 this is n1 okay refractive index of the medium where incident rays are present second surface where are the incident rays inside myself glass n2 by object distance negative of object distance where is object? Object is uh, here because these two rays never meet at the backward direction. Whereas first medium had no problem, such problem. They were meeting here. So this was object distance. Now they don't meet at all. They meet here. So this one, di1 and uh, it is positive. Why? Because it is on the right hand side. For this surface, it is on the right hand side. This negative is in the formula itself. Plus. Refractive index of the medium where refracted rays are present. After refraction, they come, ba come back to the same medium here. So that is N1 by image distance. Image distance is final image is formed here. So they meet here actually. So it is a DI, right? I think I can see it here. DI. DI. It is positive. Right hand side is equal to N2. Ah, yeah, refractive index of the refracting medium n1 minus incident medium of course this formula is uh, as it is a formula here everything gets interchanged refractive index of the refracting medium minus refractive index of the ref incident medium refractive index of refracting medium is n1 and this is n2 this n1 n2 is different okay n1 minus n2 by radius radius of this surface is on the other side it is the second center so the curvature of this and curvature of this may not be the same this we will take it as r2 but it is on the left hand side so shall i write it as minus r2 now another thing is the problem that you have done in the previous class and this derivation have is, has a small difference what is that while taking this one as the object for the second surface what did we do there is it was spr and it was there was an object and uh, there was a second refraction and like this for the first surface this distance is v1 but when you take it as an object for the, okay that this distance this distance only from the first surface the ray will meet here but for the second surface if this has to act like an object we took this as the distance because from here but in a lens there is no problem as such there is no such problem because lens is very thin whether you take the distance of this image as an object for the second lens as bi1 or di1 it is one and the same because thickness of the lens is not like a sphere sphere has more thickness but lens is a very thin lens so shall i write bi1 and di1 almost the same so shall i replace this one so bi1 since the lens is thin is almost equal to di1 so what this formula will turn into n2 by minus bi1 plus n1 by di is equal to so shall i bring this minus to the numerator so that i can multiply it here minus of n1 plus n2 so what this will become n2 minus n1 by plus r2 did you get that this minus is brought here minus n1 plus n2 n2 minus n1 by r2 this is equation 2 okay this is equation 2 and this is equation 1 Okay, I will write this one as uh, not R2, I will write it as, what is that R2? It is DC2, right? DC2. This is minus DC2 and uh, this is plus DC2, right? I will write it as DC1 and DC2, right? Because I will write it in the distances. Now, can you add these two equations? I think we can add them. When you add it, what, what you will get? Yeah, because left hand sides here you have n2 minus n1 common. Okay, what you will add here? n1 by OB, I'll write it here first, n1 by OB and plus n2 by B1, n2 by B1, uh, BI1, okay. Left hand side of this is over. Left hand side of this one, 
minus n2 by bi1 plus n1 by di okay minus n2 by bi1 plus n1 by di is equal to so when i add these two shall i take n2 minus n1 common okay what i'll get then n2 minus n1 common outside put a bracket here don't leave this into what is here 1 by bc1 plus 1 by dc2 of course i have interchanged this and i made it positive 1 by dc2 radius or n2 minus n1 by, uh, by bc1 n2 minus n1 by dc2 anyway now this gets cancelled that's the only difference you have here we need not subtract the distances from the thickness because thin lens it is so bi1 and DY, di1 can be taken almost same so that gets cancelled what is remaining n1 by ob plus n1 by di right n1 by ob plus n1 by di um, okay where is it yes that is equal to n2 minus n1 into 1 by bc1 plus 1 by bc2 now write uvr whatever the thing you want apply the sign conventions again n1 divided by what is ob ob is the object distance and uh, okay yes n1 by u right or it is minus u on the other side can you see this diagram or shall i write uh, this one here that becomes easier so i will shift that uh, equation here so that uh, you can apply to the diagram very easily so i will copy that uh, formula n1 by ob plus n1 by uh, di is equal to n2 minus n1 into 1 by dbc1 plus 1 by bc2 you have this in form uh, 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 equation in your uh, book so no problem is it all right right n1 by ob n1 by di n2 minus n1 into 1 by bc1 plus 1 by bc2 so if you want to apply for this equation the conditions here you have to apply the sign conventions once again because this equation is obtained by adding the equations for both the surfaces we have written equation for this refraction at the first surface and the refraction at the second surface finally we got this equation by adding this now if you want to use this for any type of surface because if your formula is obtained finally then it should be suitable for all the conditions all the conditions in the sense this surface may not be convex it may be a concave surface also so if the final equation is suitable for concave also again you have to apply the sign convention for that equation which is obtained by adding the two surfaces equations so we will apply the sign convention once again but while applying the sign convention here you have the object distance on the left side image distance final image distance i am talking about right hand side and uh, this is the coordinate axis here and uh, what are the these uh, radii r1 and r2 so if i write it like this suppose this surface is here first one then its radius will be here right it will be on this side this is r1 what about this is the first surface a b c and what about the second surface second surface will be here and its completion will be here and its radius will be here r2 so uh, hope you have followed and here, this is the coordinate system okay this surface is here and this sphere is completed here and this is r1 this surface which i have marked in another color pink color radius comes here to the left hand side so we will substitute n1 refractive index refractive indices as such they don't have any sign conventions because they don't come under any distance so refractive index of the medium okay divided by ob ob is the object distance that lies left side right so minus u okay because again i will apply the sign convention plus because this is a combined formula i want a final formula which is suitable for any type of occasion n1 again by image distance di this is in the right side right so this is the coordinate system this is the right side so that is image distance by v is equal to n2 minus n1 no sign conventions here into 1 by bc1 bc1 is coming uh, uh, on the right hand side right because this is uh, a b c and uh, the center of the first one lies here and a this is a d c second surface center lies here this is d c2 so 
1 by it is plus r1 hope you have followed why plus r1 because it is on the other side and the surface is here and the radius is this one r1 and uh, what about bc2 plus 1 by bc2 bc2 sorry it is okay bc2 it, it is actually right it is dc2 dc2 comes from this side to this side it is uh, on the left hand side it is r2 with a negative sign so i'll put a negative here no problem so 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 hope you have followed r1 is this side right hand side r2 is this side left hand side so this is finished now bring this common n to this side what you will get minus 1 by u plus 1 by v is equal to n2 minus n1 by 1 uh, sorry n1 this n1 common taken here will bring uh, will be will come to the denominator 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 okay now doctor has given focal length and uh, you have preferred the refractive indices and uh, lens maker will prefer the radius now where is the focal length where is the prescription of the doctor we will do it like this you know what is the focal length in your lower classes you have studied if you take a convex lens if you incident parallel rays of light they will directly go to the other surface and meet at a point it is a converging lens focal length is the distance between the focus and the lens am i right so if parallel rays are incident on a lens after refraction they meet at focus if this is the focal length now while finding the focal length you incident parallel rays of light where is the object now you ask this lens lens you have converged all the rays here and you have formed the focus where is the object lens will look to this side these rays are coming from a very large distance so object distance is infinity now ask the lens you have taken the rays of light coming from infinity and you have made them to come to focus where is the image image distance is at focus right so if the object is at infinity image is highly formed at focus we do this experiment in our when we are uh, uh, when you are kids right uh, usually kids do this experiment they take a lens again they hold it against the sunlight and all the rays parallel rays coming from the sunlight fall on a paper and forms a point object what is that bright point formed on the paper it is nothing but the image of the sun imagine the size of the sun image the, uh, the si imagine the size of the image image is highly diminished so image is at focus object at infinity you apply this condition you will get focal length apply it here hope you can see this one one by object distance one by infinity of course minus plus one by v one by focal length that is uh, this one the uh, the focal length is the uh, focus is the point where the image is formed what you will get i i will divide this n2 by n1 n2 by n1 n1 by n1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this is the formula right but 1 by infinity is uh, 0 so what you will have finally shall i write it here i think i can write it here 1 by f is equal to n2 by n1 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this is called lens baker's formula the name is given because doctor will give prefer if there is any eye defect they will dif prefer this focal length or power usually we will see what is the power of a lens and uh, you will select which type of lens you want whether it is made of a fiber or plastic or diamond or glass this you will select outside medium is usually air right and uh, the medium for this lens you will select and the lens maker will prefer the radii for the two surfaces and he will prepare a lens of this much focal length that is why this is called lens makers formula a formula which connects focal length radii curvature of the two uh, surfaces and refractive index of the two media of course i can write it like this way also n2 by n1 can be written as n21 correct n21 minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 that is also possible refractive index of the second medium with respect to first medium into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 if you get a simple question for two marks what are the factors on which focal length of a lens depends focal length of a lens depends on the material with which it is made up of n2 the uh, surrounding material surrounding medium radii of curvature of the two surfaces of the lens so these are the factors which will decide so focal length of a lens depends on the refractive index of the medium of the lens refractive index of the surrounding medium 
radii of curvature of the two surfaces. Very important formula. So we are going to play with this formula in so many problems. But instead of knowing the formula by uh, only by terms, better you know by theory. Why this is form this formula has been obtained like this? What is the theory behind this formula? And uh, what are the significance of all these uh, values? That is very important. And uh, we will uh, have few more uh, discussion on the formula itself in the next class. For the time being, you study the derivation properly. Very important derivation as a five mark derivation also. So you have to study this. And if at all you have problem, you give a message. We will clear it. But uh, uh, for the time being, I will stop it with this formula. In the next class, we will go along with the, this formula, discussion on this and a few problems. Hope you will do well and you will study the derivation properly. Ready with the formula next in the next class. Hope you will do well. Take care. Thank you.